Hi, Stuart. I'm sorry to bother you, but do you have a moment? I need to talk to you about something very important. Now? I can't talk now. Too busy. Talk to you later. Well, does that mean you'll be coming home tonight? Even if you're going to be late, that's fine. I can wait up for you. Nope. Won't be home tonight either. Didn't you hear me? I told you I was busy. Again? Stuart, you haven't come home in ten days now. Would you get off my back already? And what do you want anyway? If you have something to say, just text me. Stuart, how could you be so cold toward me? There is something very, very important that I need to talk to you about. Yeah, then hurry up and say it now. God, you're impossible to talk to sometimes. Do you have any idea how much work I have to do? This had better be a life or death type of scenario. Well, about that, I've been telling you for some time that I haven't felt well, right? Since about a month ago? Don't tell me you don't remember. I've told you so many times. What do you mean to say I don't remember? Fine, let's keep moving along, I suppose. I finally finished my big project at work the other day, so I took some time off and went to the doctor to get checked out. They told me I would need to take a long series of tests, and well, the results just came in. And? Would you get to the point already? Just spit it out, damn it! I'm... I'm dying, Stuart. I only have around a year left. What? They said they found a tumor, and it's malignant. I was in so much shock that I couldn't really pay attention to the details. But... From what I understand, the treatment costs would be massive. And even if I somehow managed to put the money together, there is no guarantee it would work. They said the hospitals around here can only treat the symptoms. And so, that's it. I have a year left to live. Are you being serious? This isn't a joke, right? I really wish it was a joke, Stuart, but it's not. It still doesn't feel real, though. It feels like a dream. More like a nightmare, really. They also said that they want you to come with me to my next appointment. The doctor wants to talk to you, too. Gotcha. Sure, I'll go to the hospital with you. But the thing is, I really can't step away from my work right now. Um, it should be done soon. Could you give me just three days? Okay, that should be fine. I'm sorry about this, Stuart. Hey there, Stacy girl! It's been a while, huh? Huh? Amy, it's you? But how are you texting me right now? I never gave you my new phone number. Yeah, well, I saw your name in Stuart's contact list and copied it onto my phone. I think the last time we spoke was when Mom and Dad kicked me out of the house. It's been like, what, two years or so? <laughs> how have you been? You doing well? Oh yeah, that's right. You're not doing well at all, are you? You're dying. <laughs> you only have a year to live? <laughs> Sucks to be you. <laughs> Wait a second. What do you mean you got my number from Stuart's phone? And how did you know I was sick? There's no reason you would know about that. Tell me what's going on right now. You want to know? Stuart told me all about it when he came over yesterday. Oh, and you want to know where he is now? He is sound asleep in bed right next to me. What? Man, you really are an oblivious idiot, Stacy. You really still don't get it? Oh my god. Stuart's been so busy with work that he hasn't come home in almost two weeks, and you never suspected the single most obvious explanation? <laughs> How dumb can you possibly be? Do you mean... Aw, oh, do you get it now? Stuart wasn't busy with work. That was all a lie. No, he's been with me this whole time. <laughs> oh, Stacy, he was so happy when he came over today to tell me some wonderful news. And you should have seen the smile on his face when he said you were dying. <laughs> this way he won't have to divorce you and he'll get your life insurance money. <laughs> he was as excited as a kid at a theme park. And once you're finally out of the way, there won't be anything stopping us from getting married. No, I, I don't believe it. Stuart was having an affair with you? Uh, this can't be real. Aw, you poor little thing. I feel bad for you. A little. <laughs> I mean, not only is your husband cheating on you with your own little sister, but you're also gonna die in a year. Your life is like a soap opera. <laughs> you, what the hell is wrong with you? How could you sleep with a married man? How? You mean you forgot how to do it? Maybe that would explain why it was so easy for me to take him from you. Anyway, Stuart and I are getting married, just so you know. With all the money he'll get from your life insurance, we're gonna have a legendary wedding. So is there any way you could speed things up in that department? You are 
evil, Amy. If you'll excuse me, Stuart just woke up, so I'm going to have a little more fun with him. <laughs> Keep feeding that tumor, will you? The bigger, the better. Don't you put your phone down. I'm not done with you. Amy! Stuart, we're going to have a talk right now. Huh? What do you want? I've got a ton of work to do. I can't talk now. You can drop the axe, Stuart. Amy already told me everything. What? How long have the two of you been having an affair? I mean, when did you even meet? You knew that Amy was my sister, didn't you? Oh, crap. This is just great. Amy wouldn't blab to you? God damn it. This is the worst possible timing for you to find out. So then you admit it. You've been cheating on me. All this time that you've been saying you had to be at work until late. All the times you've spent the night at the office and came home in the morning. Those were all lies? You were just saying that so you could go and see her? Whoop. I guess the cat's out of the bag. Yep. About six months or so ago, I just happened to run into Amy on my way home from work. We stopped in a cafe to chat and we started falling for each other right away. In my defense... I only learned later on that she was your sister, but my god, she's so much hotter than you. How was I supposed to know? She's got it all. Looks, style, personality. She's not frumpy and grumpy like you. You are scum, Stuart. You cheating, lying creep. I bet you and her spend all your time together mocking me like that, don't you? Yeah, all the time. The best thing is how we've basically been making zero effort to even hide our affair. I might as well have been wearing a sign on my back saying, I'm cheating, you idiot. And now I find out you're dying? Uh, this has been the best week of my life. Why, Stuart? Haven't I been a good wife? What have I done to you to deserve this? To me? Nothing, really. I guess if I had to say why, I just got tired of being married to a fat, ugly, depressing harpy like you. What? I heard all about how you got your parents to kick her out of the house. You were jealous of how much prettier she was, and your parents took your side over her. Poor Amy. She didn't deserve to be born into such an awful family. I wish I knew what a spiteful, bitter woman you were before I married you. Our wedding day was the single worst day in my entire life. I don't believe what I'm hearing. What sort of nonsense has that girl been telling you? You want to know what really happened? Nah, I'm not interested in hearing whatever lies you're going to make up. I know whatever I need to know. You lied to get your sister thrown out of the house. Go whine about it on social media or something. Honestly, I bet your tumor is punishment for what an evil person you've been your whole life. How's that karma taste, Stacy? You know what? I actually think you and Amy are perfect for each other. I'm divorcing you, Stuart. Go to hell. Oh no. Divorce? Anything but that. I guess it does suck that now I won't get your life insurance benefits anymore, but it's whatever. Seriously, what was Amy thinking? She broke the news way too soon. But that impulsive go-getter side of her is pretty cute, I think. Enjoy yourself while you can, Stuart. I'm going to see to it that the two of you regret this for the rest of your lives. Oh, I'm literally shaking in fear. What are you going to do about it? You're going to be dead a year from now. That's more than enough time for me. And besides, I'm too stubborn to die before I get my revenge. You two are going to curse the day you met each other. Mark my words. You've been warned. Stacy, are you there? I need money now. Huh? What is this, some new wire fraud scheme? Sorry, Mr. Wealthy deposed Nigerian prince. I'm not buying it. Stop joking around, Stacy. This is serious. Amy's life is on the line. She's been feeling under the weather lately, so she went to the hospital. I really don't know the details, but one of her organs has gone bad. They said that if she doesn't get a transplant soon, she's going to die. And the operation is going to cost a ton of money. Oh, and? And? Is that all you have to say? You got to give back all the money you took from me. And you're her sister, so you're going to have to be the donor. Mm, nope, I'm still not really understanding what you want here. Exactly why do I have to give you money and give my sister one of my organs? Because you're the only one who can. Don't you know how transplants work? The donor has to be someone who's compatible with the recipient. And you're the only person who can do it. And you took tons of money from me, so I know you've got more than enough to give back. Money? Are you by any chance referring to the settlement for your affair? 
You know the lawsuit I filed against you six months ago? You want me to give that back to you? I don't know what organ Amy needs, but I think you might need a brain transplant. God, you're a piece of work. Just get over here tomorrow as early as possible. I have all the forms you need to sign right here. You've only got a year left to live anyway. For once in your life, how about you be a decent sister? Excuse me? Let me think. Should I do this to help you out? Hmm. Nope. Should I do this for that girl then? Hmm. Nope. Not a chance in hell. Even if I wanted to, I can't. Nah. I think I'll go ahead and live out the next 70 years or so of my life in peace. Oh, and the money from the settlement is all gone. What? What are you talking about? You only have six months left. And what did you do with all that money? You didn't do something stupid like give it to charity, right? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm cured. You what? I took the money I got from the two of you for your affair and went to a private hospital that my doctor told me about that had the technology to get rid of the tumor. The surgery was done in a few hours, and after a few weeks in the hospital for observation, I was discharged tumor-free and ready to live the rest of my life however I damn well please. No. You mean you're not going to die? Nope. Like I said, fully cured. I can walk, run, swim, work, whatever I want. I actually already started working at my old company this month. And it's a good thing, too, since that surgery cost me every last cent of the settlement money. You can't be serious. But if you are, then that means you have to help me out. Explain. The only reason you're better is because of my money, right? That means you owe me. And since you also sued Amy, that means you owe her too. You owe us, and it's time to pay up. <laughs> you are out of your mind. You actually think I owe you? Get real, you moron. Let's recap, shall we? When I got sick, what did you do? You completely abandoned me so you could shack up with my sister, who you'd been cheating on me with for six months. I owe you? What do you think I got that money for, anyway? It was to remedy the wrongs that you had done to me. But Amy's your sister. How can you just abandon your own sister in her time of need? Amy? She's not my sister, not anymore. That relationship was severed a long time ago. And besides, she brought all this on herself. She knew the consequences for what she was doing when she made the life choices that she did. How dare you say that? Do you have any idea how badly Amy is suffering right now? Uh, yeah, actually, I have a pretty good idea. I mean, didn't you hear? Did she tell you what caused her to get sick? Huh? Did you hear the name of her disease? Did you talk to the doctor directly? Or did you hear everything from her? Well, Amy gave me the general rundown of what was going on. She said that it was something she was born with, and it just started getting worse lately. Born with? <laughs> no way. No, she was born as healthy as a horse. She wasn't born with anything but a black hole for a soul, apparently. No, she picked up her disease more recently than that. And as for what caused it, well, let's just say she's had a lot of men in her life. <laughs> Wait, you mean... I swear that girl has slept with every single man she's ever seen. Back in high school, she was hitting on every boy in the school, including the teachers. She'd spend nights and weekends with men she met online. Then she started going to seedy bars and leaving with different men every night, and sometimes more than one. At one point, word got around town that she was dating a leader of one of the gangs that operates downtown. This guy was absolutely notorious. Everyone knew about him. My mom and I tried as hard as we could to get her to come to her senses, but nothing got through to her. Then one day, she got pregnant with some guy that none of us even knew. She stole a bunch of my parents' money and left the house one night, and after that, my parents officially disowned her. Apparently, she was intending to settle down with that guy, which would be a nice change. But then the baby was born, and, uh, well, let's just say it was pretty obvious he wasn't the father. So, naturally, he kicked her to the curb, and Amy kicked her son to the curb, putting him up for adoption. And what did she do the moment she left the adoption agency? Started shacking up with other guys. From what I heard, the kid was born healthy, so I'd imagine she contracted her disease after that. Wait, hold on. That can't be true. Amy told me the whole story. She said your parents called her dead weight for being sick and kicked her out. And you, you were always jealous because she was prettier than you. You guys were the problem, not her. Oh, I see. So that's the story she told you, huh? 
I guess that would explain why you'd been treating me so harshly for a while back before we got divorced. She told you that BS sob story and you bought it? <laughs> what kind of gullible moron are you? She... she was sobbing though. Those tears were real. She told me that I was the only person that she could trust. How can I just let her suffer? I had to rescue her from you. Oh my god, you are so pathetic. <laughs> So, what, do you just believe anything a crying woman tells you? You don't think to, you know, ask someone else about her? And just so you know, you're not the only man she has right now. As far as I'm aware, she's seeing five other guys. She posts all the pictures on her burner account she doesn't think I found. <laughs> I don't believe you. You're the liar, not Amy. I trust Amy. She loves me. Hey, you're free to believe me or not. It's not really my problem. I'm just telling you what I know to be facts, that's all. She was sleeping with every male in town with a pulse for years, and now the bill for that lifestyle has finally come due. I'm not giving her any money or any of my organs. Not after everything she's done to me and my family. Besides, she's got six men on her short list. She can ask them for help. I bet if you guys all pooled your money together, she could afford the surgery. <laughs> Maybe one of them is compatible as a donor, too. Ask her for their numbers if you want. Bye bye Hey, wait! Um, Stacy, I've been thinking. Oh, one more thing. I'm leaving the country for a while. What? My work is sending me to a temporary post in an overseas branch. They said they were anxious for me to come back since I'm the best one for the job. No one else around here speaks the language. And since the company's paying for everything, I think I'll do a little sightseeing before I come back. So don't bother asking me for money or organs anymore because I can't give you either. No, that's not it. Like I said, I've been thinking. And, um, well, do you think we might be able to have a chat sometime? We can have dinner together, drinks, you know. I'm free whenever. Let me go ahead and stop you right there. I do not love you anymore. I have no feelings for you anymore other than hate. I would rather than put the tumor back in my body than ever see your face again. So if I've made myself clear, never contact me again. Adieu. Wait, Stacy, please. I'm sorry for everything. I was a fool. Please forgive me. Take me back. After that, Stuart went right into the hospital room and asked Amy a few passing questions. He discovered that, lo and behold, everything I said was 100% true. He told her he wanted a divorce, but of course she refused. He even tried doing what I told him and contacted all of Amy's other boyfriends for help. But alas, all that happened was a bunch of angry voicemail exchanges. In the end, all of the other boyfriends disappeared and Stuart was left to deal with Amy alone. While all of that was going on, Amy's condition continued to worsen. She's been weakened to the point that she can't even lift a pen to sign the divorce papers that Stuart keeps by her bedside. So, since he can't divorce her and has no money to hire help, Stuart now has to serve as a 24-7 caretaker for his now invalid wife. Something tells me that arrangement won't last very long, though. Despite my final words, Stuart kept begging me to help right until I left the country. And now that I'm free of all that baggage, I can finally enjoy myself for the first time in forever. I see this trip as a major turning point in my life, a chance to get a new start. And this time around, I am not going to marry anyone like that dirtbag. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.